in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the Presbyterian churches are committed to empowering their children through education. They want to provide quality schools that transform students into strong moral leaders. Currently, the Congo's churches run over 900 primary and secondary schools. 787 are in East and West Kasai. 132 are in Bakongo, Kinshasa, and Bandundu. The church's schools are located in cities and rural areas across 1,400 miles of jungles and savannas. The number of schools has increased in the past few years because one region was added and many schools have become accredited. Congo's churches also support higher education at the Protestant University, the Booth Pastoral Training Institute, the Christian Medical Institute of Kasai, and Upreco Seminary and Law School. Pervasive poverty means that 80% of Congo's primary and secondary school buildings are in a very deteriorated state. Poverty also prevents schools from providing books, desks, teacher training, and equipment. The poverty exists in part because the Congo, which is one quarter the size of the U.S., has huge mineral deposits that are exploited by other countries and corporations. It also has an unstable government and continual conflicts. The Congo is ranked at the bottom of the UN's Human Development Index. $319 is the gross annual income per family. Three and a half years of education is the average for a Congolese adult. Despite poverty and conflicts, Teachers, students, and parents keep their schools working. Teachers tape old books together, make math materials out of bottle caps, create blackboards out of planks, repair ancient typewriters, and create benches out of used lumber. Students also help. They bring sticks for school repairs. They bring chairs for classrooms or sit on the floor. They try to memorize their lessons because they have no books or papers on which to take notes. Sometimes students have to take siblings to school so their parents can go to market to raise tuition money. Because of their concerns about the Congo schools, representatives of Congolese and American Presbyterian churches met in 07, 08, and 11 to create a strategic plan to strengthen the Congo schools. This plan is called the Congo Education Excellence Project. Its goals are durable buildings with latrines, textbooks for teachers, training for teachers, motorcycles to reach remote schools, and scholarships for girls and orphans. Signs of change are occurring in Congo schools. This girls' school was built in Kananga by Myers Park Presbyterian Church of Charlotte in cooperation with the Congolese Church. It is designed as a model school to develop future women leaders. Teacher textbooks were provided to almost 800 Congo schools by American and Kanangan rotaries. An after-school computer and English program was created for high school girls to prepare them for jobs from which they have traditionally been excluded. Teacher training has begun and proposals have been written to expand the training to all 8,000 teachers in the Congo's Presbyterian schools. Donors and trainers are needed. Scholarships have been generously provided to girls and orphans. This school in the village of Zappo Zappo is an example of how a strong partnership between a small rural village and many U.S. churches can develop. Thirty-five years ago, Zappo Zappo School was first built of mud, sticks, and grass. Hundreds of primary-aged children were educated here because the villagers and students constantly repaired the school. Zappo Zappo's church members 
asked their national church leaders to help them build a durable school. A proposal to build it was written and sent to the U.S. education team and member churches. First Presbyterian Church of Evanston, Illinois, gave a challenge grant for the school. Their members and other churches held special events and sold necklaces to raise money. The school's fund was completed in just 11 months. When Zappo Zappo's villagers heard the exciting news, everyone helped. The men found stones in the jungle, cut a path to them, broke them up, and carried them to a truck. Gwenda Fletcher, Presbyterian Education Liaison, visited the digging site to show appreciation for the men's initiative. Ilunga, the church's contractor, hired construction workers, secured building materials, and transported them to the construction site. The children gladly helped by carrying water for the construction crew, and the village women cooked bedia and greens daily for five months to feed the workers. The school's foundation was laid without frames, but skilled workmen still created an even surface. Mission workers Jeff and Christy Boyd, with Congolese church leaders, visited Zappo Zappo to see and encourage the school's progress. The building process went very smoothly despite the lack of electricity, power tools, and running water. Fired brick walls were laid and a metal roof installed. Students assisted by digging dirt and sweeping up debris. Doors and windows were hung, plaster was applied to the exterior walls, and the trim was painted. Latrines were built because girls' school attendance and graduation rates improve when they have latrines. Students who sat on worn planks will now enjoy solid desks. After only five months, Zappo Zappo School was finished. On dedication day, an excited group of singing women and students met the guests. A ribbon was cut to launch the new school, and a joyful tour followed. Coordinator Mputu announced there would be a high school for the first time. Primary students would use the new school in the morning and secondary students in the afternoon. Older students would no longer have to walk miles to attend high school or drop out at the end of sixth grade. Everyone was thrilled with the new school. Golela explains the impact of the new school on her son. Due to the success of Zappo Zappo School, First Presbyterian Church of Evanston approved another challenge grant to build a second rural school in Moina Ditu. Lafayette Arinda Presbyterian Church and many other U.S. churches completed the funding in only four months. This school's construction will begin soon. Donors for a third school in Mueca are currently being sought. Willie Lushimba survived childhood polio to become a teacher because of his faith, his family, and his school. I heartfelt thanks to Presbyterians for what they did. For the first, if I am alive today, it is because of them. If they weren't there, I couldn't be alive. I could be killed by this disease, but I was saved because of Presbyterian. Their school are very good school. Students have a good level, and they study and follow a good program. That gives a good education to our children. And thanks a lot for them, for all that they have done for my country. May God bless them.
as a man, there is nothing to give them, but God himself will reward them one day. Thanks. Sinela Rubana. Sí, 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 sí,